Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about return loss and SWR. And at the end of the video, we're going to do a real world example to show how and where you want to measure for these things. Stick around. You might be surprised. So we're going to start this conversation by first asking, what the heck is return loss? And it's the measure of reflection of a signal from a load, an antenna in amateur radio, back to the source, which is a radio in amateur radio. It results from an impedance mismatch between the source and the load. In amateur radio, we typically look for a 50 ohm impedance match. Return loss is typically measured in decibels, but it's easily converted to SWR. There are many online calculators and conversion tables, so you can convert SWR into return loss or return loss into SWR. I'm not going to go into the math on it because it's actually pretty complicated. Using my art skills, I put together this return loss diagram. And if you take a look at it, moving from left to right, you'll see a radio all the way to your output or your transmitted power. So your radio emits a signal, and we call this the forward or incident power. It goes into your antenna system. Now your antenna system consists of your coaxial cable or transmission line, as well as your antenna. And then you have your output or your transmitted power. And this is what makes it out of your antenna. When signals go into your antenna system, some of that signal is reflected back. That is referred to as reflected power. That shouldn't be a surprise. And when we talk about return loss, it is the incident or forward power divided by your reflected power. And that's how you derive return loss. So you may be asking, how does it compare to SWR? Return loss and SWR basically measure the exact same thing. SWR, or more correctly referred to as VSWR, sometimes pronounced VISWAR, is your voltage standing wave ratio. It is a measurement of impedance match between a transmission line and a load, in our case an antenna. SWR is expressed as a ratio. For example, 2 to 1 SWR is a 100 ohm to a 50 ohm match. And I think ham radio folks use SWR because it's a lot easier to understand a ratio than it is a formula based off of a logarithmic equation. So SWR is not linear, and it's very difficult to understand the difference between a 20 dB loss and, say, a 25 or 35 dB loss. But it's easy for you to contextualize 2 to 1 SWR as something that you might be concerned about. So what does all this mean? A 2 to 1 SWR is roughly a 9.5 dB return loss, with about 11% of your power being reflected back towards your source. A transmitter operating at 100 watts into an antenna will only have 89% or 89 watts of its forward or incident power absorbed by the antenna. And this is why ham radio operators are concerned with SWR. We want to maximize our forward power. So to confuse the matter even more, we're going to talk a little bit about insertion loss. So this is a signal loss that occurs on a transmission line. The longer the transmission line, the greater the loss. It's also measured in decibels. Now, some people will call this line loss or coax loss, but let's take a look at it. So once again, I use my art skills to come up with a diagram. It's very similar to the first. You have your radio and your forward or your incident power going into your antenna system with your output power and your transmitted power. It also shows the reflected power coming back from the antenna system. Insertion loss equals the incident or forward power divided by your transmission power. Okay, so here's our real world example. In this diagram, we have a radio fed with some coaxial cable. In this particular instance, for the sake of this conversation, this coaxial cable has a 1.25 dB line loss. The red arrow depicts the feed point of the antenna, and that's where we're gonna take some measurements. So when you measure at the feed point of the antenna, in this example, we have a two to one SWR, like we've been talking about earlier in the video, or a 9.5 dB return loss. We talked about this being 11% of our power reflected back into our transmission line at the antenna, with 89% of our power being transmitted. This does not account for transmission line loss. So let's talk a little bit more about a real world example. Here we're operating with 100 watts on the transmission line, which is 1.25 dB in line loss. Only 75 watts will reach our antenna. Our antenna SWR of 2 to 1 does not change, and neither does the return loss of 9.5 dB. So this means we have 11% of our power reflected and 89% transmitted. But only 75 watts reaches our antenna because of our line loss. This really means that 
8.25 watts is reflected and 66.7 watts is transmitted. Now you can see as a ham radio operator, I might be sitting in my shack thinking I'm pushing 100 watts. In reality, I'm pushing 66.75. And to me, that's a little concerning. Now you might be saying, hey, but what happens if you measure your SWR at the radio as opposed to the antenna feed point? That's how a lot of people do it. You still show 100 watts in forward power, but your reflected power is 8.25 watts because you have to account for the line loss coming back from your antenna. This really turns into 6.19 watts at the radio. So your SWR at the radio is going to look like 1.6 to 1. And, or it's going to look like 12.107 return loss. Now you might be thinking, 1.6, that's not really bad SWR, and it's not. But your real SWR at your antenna is 2 to 1. That transmission line loss is masking the true SWR, or the impedance match, of your transmission line and your antenna. 1.6 is the impedance match between your radio and your antenna system, which includes your transmission line. All right, so let's go into the summary. Here we have a data table that shows a couple of different measurements at different places. So the first one being incident power or forward power. At the radio, it's 100 watts. At the antenna, it's really 75. Reflected power at the radio is 6.19 watts. At the antenna, it's really 8.25. SWR readings at the radio are 1.6 to 1, while at the antenna, it's 2 to 1. Return loss at the radio is 12.1 dB and 9.5 dB at the antenna. And then our transmitted power. At the radio, we're going to think we're transmitting at 100 watts, but in all actuality, 66.75 watts. Hopefully this explains a little bit about SWR, return loss, and how to measure to get accurate representations of what your antenna system is doing. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.